So the following video is another example of equilibrium and free body diagram examples. The main point is this, of this video is to explain to you how we convert a uniformly distributed load into a point load. Okay. So <coughs> initially, ignoring the following blue line in the middle, this one here, we have a uniformly distributed load, as you can see, this one over here. The uniformly distributed load is 2 kN per meter. We ignore this 12 kN point load for now, okay? The span of this uniformly distributed load is 6 meters long, okay? So how do we convert the following UDL into a point load? Well, simply, we just multiply the UDL by its span, and we get this as a point load. So what we do is we do 2, two kN per meter times its length, which is 6 meters, and meter cancels out with a meter, so we end up with 12 kN. And technically, since we've converted this UDL into a point load, the point load lies exactly in the center of the UDL, and it's equal to 12 kN. Okay? So this is how we convert a UDL into a point load. Now imagine we have the following example in equilibrium and free body diagrams. Right? So we have the following simply supported beam. Okay? So we have a pin over here and a roller over here. Right? Um, it cantilevers out on both sides by 2 meters each, so it's hanging outside 2 meters to the right and hanging outside 2 meters to the left on the left hand side here. And at the end we have a clockwise 20 kN meter moment, 2 meters away from the left hand support. Okay. So the first thing, um, we have to work out the reaction forces on this simply supported beam. Okay, so um, what, what happens is that the following span from the pin to the roller is exactly 4 meters okay and we have 2 meters on the left hand side and 2 meters on the right hand side okay and the span of this UDL is from here to here and it's 6 meters long okay so the first thing we do is we have to convert um, the UDL into a point load so it's simply the same UDL as up here so we do 2 kN per meter times its length which is 6 meters because from here to here is 4 meters and we have another 2 meters so um, 2 times 6 gives us 12 kN and since we've converted the UDL into a point load the point load is going to be in the center of the UDL which is 3 meters away from this pin okay so this is 4 meters and this is 3 meters it's not exactly to scale I didn't draw to scale but know that when we convert a UDL into a point load the point load is exactly in the center of the UDL so since this from here to here is 6 meters, the point load of the UDL is actually halfway, so 3 meters away from this pin. Okay? So um, the reason we convert a UDL into point load is when we do when we add forces, we can't add a kilonewton with a kilonewton per meter. We have to add consistent units. Okay? So the first thing we do is sum of forces about the x direction equals zero. Now we have a pin, so we have two reaction forces, a vertical restraint and a horizontal restraint. And on the roller we have one vertical restraint. So sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero. Immediately from here HA is equal to zero kN meters since it's the only horizontal force. Next we have sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. So we have VA plus VB minus, since the UDL is pointing down, so it's a negative direction, two times 6, so the UDL times its length. Since we can't add kilonewtons with kilonewton per meter, we convert the UDL into a point load, so we add kilonewtons with kilonewtons. So rearranging with this, we have VA plus VB is equal to 12. So this is why we convert a UDL into a point load, only to add forces together. Okay? Now, on the other hand, since we have VA plus VB equals to 12 here, it's one equation with two unknowns we need to do another thing to work out the following reaction forces so we can use moments so I chose the moments about point A over here okay so first of all we have negative 20 because we have a clockwise moment on the end so that's just minus 20 plus VB times 4 right so the following one here so HA and VA have no lever arm about point A so we ignore them VB so if we hold this pin in its position and we rotate in the direction of VB, VB causes an anti-clockwise rotation about point A, and its lever arm is 4 meters from here to here. So this is why it's plus VB times 4. 
then we have minus this, this is the UDL so if we put A in its place and we rotate in the direction of the UDL we have a clockwise direction so it's a minus right so first of all we have minus 2 times 6 so this is converting the UDL into a point load right okay and then we multiply by 3 as you can see here because this is the lever arm from the pin support so if we convert the following UDL okay into a point load of 12 kilonewtons since this point load is exactly in the center it's 3 meters away from point A so we multiply by 3 which is the lever arm okay so this rearranging for this we get VB to equal 56 kilonewtons okay now that we know that VA plus VB is 12 and we know that VB is 56 we can substitute into this equation and we find that VA is minus 44 kilonewtons and we just establish our final result so we worked out that VA is negative 44 VB is 56 kilonewtons and HA is 0 kilonewtons okay so I hope this video has helped you understand the main thing to know is your directions first of all understanding how to convert a UDL into a point load so we multiply the UDL by its span and this makes it a point load remember that a clockwise moment is negative and anti-clockwise moment is positive and the, I think the only tricky thing here was this minus 2 times 6 times 3 so I did minus 2 indicates the UDL the, the magnitude I multiply by 6 to convert it into a point load so that 6 is the span now the point load is exactly in the center and it's 3 meters away from point A so we multiply it by the lever arm of 3 and we worked out the sum of forces using sum of forces and sum of moments about a point to equal zero. So thank you for listening.